think so. Oh, good. Start talking. Hi. It's Karen. And Tim. Live today back from Thailand. We had a little bit of a hiccup. We were going to be on here a minute early, and it said we couldn't go live. We had to pick a new location. We thought, I don't think I... Did I mess with my phone when we were in Thailand? But it seems to be working, so let us know if you're here. Except and nobody, no, no comments yet, so let's... Okay, well, we'll, we'll just talk. see. Otherwise, you know, otherwise we'll know it's a glitch again. Yep. You're, you're, oh, good. Karen, okay. Kimberly, welcome oh, back. We're so glad when it works. And <laughs> we've actually missed doing this, so it's really fun to be back and talking to you guys on a regular thing. I came home to a welcome home card. I don't know if I've ever done that in my life. Got a card from Sheila Weingarten from Wisconsin. Look at this. Never regret anything that made you laugh. I think that's a comment about the Q&A video we did because I wanted to redo it. <laughs> and Tim said, no, it's just funny. But how and fun uh, is that? Very nice. And we got another anniversary card. <laughs> so, you know, this just might go on all year. From Sylvia Smith from Illinois. And I'm going to open this. Oh, is that, is that gorgeous? Look at this. Uh, the pretty paper in the background. And look how simple and elegant that is with that. For a special couple. Oh, how sweet is that? And the little green heart. And I love that little heart in green. Oh, and there's stamping inside too. And she sent Tim. Sylvia also sent Tim a birthday card. So, real yeah, quick, open that. I had to go get my uh, letter open. Oh, because he doesn't like the way I open no, things. I don't. <laughs> I have always hoped things this I have, way. I have, a, I have a little perfectionistic streak here. Yeah, him. he does. I have none. <laughs> Celebrate your big day with cake. Oh, love it. This is beautiful. And look. And look inside. Oh, what a fun thing that is to do with the paper. I so, love, yeah. you know, very simple designs that are just really striking. I love that. Thank you, Sylvia. Those are, those are gorgeous cards. I have a few others from before, too, that I haven't uploaded yet. So um, I will put those in the photo albums. And? And Tim, get the question, oh, the comments yeah. up so yeah. I can see if there's comments. <laughs> so today we're going to be doing some embossing techniques. Um, and But before that, I have a couple of other things to share. You know, we, we, we always have lots to share. <laughs> I know we move pretty fast. What? Keep talking. Keep talking. Oh, I'm waiting for Tim, you know, no. to set this up no. for me, but I, I can't show anything until, so no. I'm going to keep talking. Yeah. So okay. as you know, I'm going to show some things with the Daisy Bundle and then a couple of other things later. And as we all know, you cannot order the Daisy Bundle this month. It's, well, it's supposed to be available the very last day of this month, but I wouldn't hold out waiting on that. So I'm letting you know that next month, the card kit is going to be from the Coffee Cafe Bundle. I have some really fun cards for the card kit. I'm going to do some fun folds again. And I know you're going to love that kit. So my suggestion would be, if you want to keep ordering, is to do the Coffee Cafe Bundle this month and then wait on the Daisy Bundle next month because that way you'll have a card kits for both. So you'll have all the stuff you need to make more. You know, the card kits I send, everything's included too, so you don't need to have the bundle to finish anything. Also, because I still have jet lag, I had the special offer that I put out to my mailing list. Uh, you'll all get it. You just don't hear what it is if you're on my mailing list. But you get an extra gift if you place a $50 order in my shop this month. I don't usually talk like this right now, but I am and, just because I'm waiting on Tim. Yes, and <laughs> if, if you didn't read her email, she, uh, she, we have we have a Catholic church about three blocks oh. ago, <laughs> and she was going to sit in her Lazy Boy and listen to the church bells at 7.30. I always do that. I always close my eyes and listen to the bells. It's a little break. And she woke up <laughs> at 11 o'clock. Sitting with my computer there. So I decided I was on jet lag. So since I decided I'd had jet lag till Sunday, I'm still offering that extra thing for orders through Sunday. Plus, I'm stamping up. Remember, with each $50, you get a $5 coupon to be used in August. So those are some awesome deals. Wonderful. Oh, so now I see people. Janie, Christine, Julie, Karen, Laura, Sandy. Oh, thanks, everyone. Wonderful to have everyone here. Now Tim can bring it down. <laughs> we can get started. Oh, the host code for this month is... I can't read it backwards, so I guess you can read it. I'll read it. Tim will read it. T as in Timothy. J7. Mm. <laughs> We're playing bingo. M. M. <laughs> 
Z or Z for you Canadians. A P three. So T J seven. M Z A P three. Okay, now while he puts it down, I do have a Facebook group just for my customers and downline, and we did a fun thing while I was gone. I drew, uh, I asked people to show a selfie so we could see each other better, how we look, and then a card uh, that they've made. And then I drew 12 names, and they're all getting an accessory, and we're going to watch, see what they make with that, so that's going to be really fun. So if when you place your first order with me, you get an invite into that group, just so you know, and... Uh, I get a lot of requests to be in there, but if I don't recognize your name from having bought from me, uh, you're not in there. If I've forgotten something, you are welcome to tell me. Remember, I bought this, but, you know, could be me. So we are on Daisy Delight first, and I wanted to, you know, we know we can make daisies, and I have all, I've been showing all these beautiful cards. I don't have any in front of me now. I have just stacks of cards, but you've seen them. But I wanted to, uh, to also say you don't have to limit to daisies. So today we're going to make, first thing we're going to make is a sunflower. So I always love sunflowers. Mad says she has judging jet lag and she hasn't flown since February. Oh, maybe I can get more mileage out of this for ages, right? <laughs> Hi, Mary Ellen, Debbie. And, and you know, as I said, I, I had also mentioned we had this really long ride home but our friends Kathy Ossazani her son and wife who is a stamper and their three little kids took them three 33 hours to get back to Thailand a few days ago with a sick baby and no a sick three-year-old probably three-year-old twins and a baby and I thought you know what ours was a piece of cake you know we just had ourselves and we could read and people watch so so uh, I'm sure they are really glad to get home okay so I've made my triple stack here and then I've taken the one and, I wrote it down somewhere, I think it's the one and three eighths circle punch. And I put it through the softly falling folder to have some dots for the middle. And, you okay. know, this is so, read, oh, read, read some read comments. The, no, the one, Anita, Tim. And Patricia, we were there about 10 days. What, what did, oh, Tim, can you please turn the code right side? Was he reading it upside down? No, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know how it was. <laughs> no. Okay, that, that, that is pretty funny. We really, see, Tim probably has jet lag too. He just won't admit it, you know. So, okay. <laughs> so what's fun about this is the punch itself, you know, has a small center. And now I put this really big center on it. And I'm just going to go around and flip up all the ends. Uh, and it works better to do them separately so you get a little more variety. But, you know, I always get a little rushed. Somebody said maybe we'll just see you a short time today, but, you know, I have, it'll still be plenty long. I just didn't quite get some things totally finished, but it's okay. So how fun is that for... Uh, <laughs> hope I'm not driving. I'm really not. <laughs> but I should I should be totally rested up now. So here's my sunflower, and I didn't quite fill the gaps as much as I'd like, but you know, you, you can do that on yours, okay? And just taking a little of the wood grain background, and there's my little sunflower card, just really simple. But how fun is that out of the daisy? So, so and now another one we could make is a coneflower. You know, and it, it is just kind of fun to think of, you know, because, you, you know, when you look at the small one. Okay, so next we're going to do the coneflower. And for this, now this is the stamp set, and I did stamp this little piece in, uh, I'm using Early Espresso on a little craft and cut that one out. I could have punched it, but I kind of like the irregular look on that. And then I stamped, so this is going to be another really simple card, because we haven't even gotten into the topic of the day yet, you know. So this is still Early es Espresso, and I took from here the long stem. I love doing things that, color, you know, I know that could be green, but I love doing things in just like a all the same color. I stamped it off once so this would be lighter so that with the full strength I could put the thank you right over it and you'd be able to read that if that makes sense. Kathy said she loved coneflowers. I was just reading that coneflowers are really good for bees too. We're having a lot of problems you know with the bees disappearing and they say part of it is that people are um, buying plants that are imported that aren't native and you know bees don't know what to do with that. So whether that's true or not I thought well Good for coneflowers. So for this one, I'm going to take one daisy punch. So I'm going to do these bright colors, and I'm going to 
Oh, I meant I meant to curve that a little more, but we'll pretend. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do th three more like this. And then this is how I'm going to build this. Okay, we'll put this on. I should probably just use a... I don't have my silicone mat out here, do I? That's okay, it's going to be covered. Okay, so I'm going to put my, that on. And then I'm going to add... Good thing it's going to be covered because so I've kind of got it all over. And I'm going to add that. And then, you know what? I am going to use a glue dot on this. So then I'm going to put that so that it sticks up a little more. But how fun is that? So now we have a different kind of, kind of, um, a couple of other flowers. And then, of course, the standard daisies. So that's my start. Bonnie says, second letter to the T and, and <laughs> oh, this is too funny. That doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> T and a backwards L? What in the world? Oh, that's, no wonder you are asking. I'm, you know what? I'm not sure. If somebody would do me a favor and go to my blog at KarenTitus.com, you can, if you can open it second tag and then just tell us what the second letter is. It's a backwards L. That isn't. Oh, Tim wrote it, and it's a J. Oh, okay, it's Tim's writing. <laughs> okay, it, we're all thinking J's it's a backwards L. L. What? How why would oh. it be a backwards L? It's a J. Oh, we all know why it'd be back. Okay, mystery it's solved. It's, it's a, a J. A J. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. really? How do you make a J? A little more curvy, but you know, oh, but that's a little more curvy. Oh, excuse <laughs> but me. But it's okay. Okay, now we're going on to that. So in, in the scheme of things, is that closer to a J than anything else? Well, we were guessing a backwards L, but, but that's okay, Tim. It's really, really okay. We love to tease him, though, don't we? But that was really an honest thing. It's a J. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, good. So that was for those of you who aren't totally into embossing. I actually, to be perfectly honest, don't emboss a lot. I love it, and, and I love this, the look. Oh, and by it's the way, fun. this okay. is an incomplete B. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, it is not. So I want to do something for those of us that don't do tons of embossing. But sometimes it's fun to see all the things to do with embossing, too. And my main reason is I'm usually in a rush when I make cards, but... Uh, so on this next one, now on this I'm using glossy. It's so fun to have glossy paper back in the catalog because it just gives such a shine. But this technique will work on shimmery white or plain white too. So you can do that. So, oh, Catherine says she's using her three $5 coupons next month for the Daisy Bundle. Isn't that awesome? Because you get one for every $50 order. So it's just fun to plan ahead. Bonnie says smarty pants. <laughs> okay. Did Anita start that whole thing about the J? Was that Anita? I don't know who started it. We'll she figure says, it out. She's apologizing, so it could have been me. Well, I don't know. Who's, you don't have no reason to apologize. The rest of us were curious, too. So it's, all, <laughs> so it's all good. So for this, on my sheet of paper, I have, and I'm not sure you can see, but I have embossed in white five of the daisies. And now I can just... Um, Oh, this is kind of a wiggly table. This is an old library table that I work on. It was my grandparents. But isn't that fun? You can just see how the colors pop. So there's yellow. And then I'm going to do some pink. Uh, melon. I guess the melon mambo. Bonnie. Bonnie takes credit for it. Okay. <laughs> the credit or the blame. We're not sure. But, you know, but it's all good. <laughs> and I'm just kind of following this around. And so here's my... This, again, would be another um, a fun project to do with kids, especially if you had the embossing all done. Because, you know, I could do stripes on this. That would be a cool look. I was thinking about doing that if I did more, because um, that would be fun, too. And then I am taking Tempting Turquoise and putting that in. These sponge daubers, if you don't have them, they're, they're wonderful because they just fit on your finger. And I just leave them for color families. I know some people label them and keep them for the same color. I just clean it off if I'm going to do a lighter blue. And I stay in the blues family and it seems to work for me. But that's because I'm not, uh, like Tim said, I'm not that perfectionist. perfectionistic. So. <laughs> See, and I guess I'd like to move this in a little more. Okay, then I can complete my card. And I did another one here. 
So you can see just very different looks. Here I did yellow in the middles, and I, you can see I didn't care. I'm going for kind of a messy look. And then the Melon Mambo on the outside. And then this was still Tempting Turquoise, but it was before I re-inked it, so it was pretty dry. And I kind of started where it'd be lighter, and then it kind of mixes a little bit of the color when it goes in there. I thought, just kind of a fun look. Okay. <laughs> oh, Anita said she was upside down. She was upside down or something. Oh, anyway, okay. we don't know, but that'll go on forever. Vanessa. So, we'll will photo paper, paper work? Um, I've never tried it, so the thing is, try it. I bet it would. I, I don't have any reason to think that it wouldn't. But I think the, the thing that's fun about what we do is that we just get to try anything. Now, this next one I didn't really complete. This is the one the other projects are completed. But here I'm just going to have two little mini cards because I wanted to show that you embossing on vellum also really works well. And so, and I'm showing the two differences here. If, oh, here's the differences. Okay. Should I move okay. the camera back or do you want Karen's hair in the... Oh, my head's in the way? Okay, okay. <laughs> the, okay. the pinks are good. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. So on this, I just took some different colors. Let's see, which one was this for? This was... It would make much more sense. But on this one, and I think this is probably my favorite way, this is embossed on vellum in black, and I'm coloring on the underside, and it ends up looking, uh, you know, we have a lot of orange there. I'll change it to pink. This will be a two-tone leaf. I'm just going for some brightness. You can see I could do a lot of shading, especially if this were a bigger thing. You could do a lot of different things. But you can be a little messy on the background, too, because when you turn it over, it is more like, and this is going to smear in here because it's not yet dry. I can um, clean it with a Kleenex and I'll take some and I'll let it dry. But do you see how it's going to look like? If I put it on, then maybe it'll just, and this isn't what you would put vellum on. You know, we would use the other, but maybe this will do for today. These are just little samples. But do, if you see, that almost looks like a little watercolor, watercolor look. And then on this one, I just took some other colors, and I'm coloring right on the top of it. So we'll do them side by side. Now this one would show a little bit more, although it's pretty easy to color when you have embossing. Those edges just really help. But a little of the ink pools a little more. It's just a little different. And again, I could clean that off. But I'm not going to. And again here, if I put it that way on here, and I'm putting it, you know, if I put it on here, it's going to, it'll look nice too, but it stays darker. That's why I'm putting it on the white. And so now this one, if you can tell the difference, they're not attached very well. But just a fun look with vellum. Hold them a little closer. A little closer. Okay. Can you see that? Towards you too. Oh, and towards me? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Vanessa said she doesn't get how to do embossing. Will you just wait? Because we are going to show the last two projects we're actually doing the embossing. Tim is going to emboss. Yes, Tim is going to emboss. <laughs> okay. Um, but I would have to say this one is actually the one I use the most, the coloring on the underside. I just think that gives just this really lovely, a little bit softer look than the markers itself. I agree. Uh, uh, the embossing doesn't go through the bellum. No, you can see it on the other side. Uh, but no, it doesn't go through. So it won't get messy on the underside. This one will because I've colored it on the underside. I just have to let it dry better. Or And then before I would really attach it, I would take a Kleenex and wipe it off, and that will get anything that's still left. Okay, so that is project number two. I'm going to show one more, and then it will be Tim's turn. Here, Tim, I'm going to hand this to you as he's walking out of the room. Back at Easter time. Oh, yeah, the little cards would be great for gift enclosure cards. I guess they would be useful, so see. <laughs> Okay, so this is the next one, and I, I love this card. I did this technique back at Easter. If you, if, For those of you who have been with us for a long time, I did the cross, and it just turned out just beautiful as an Easter card. So I thought, mm, let's see. I know that the browns kind of turn yellowish, so I thought, let's do that again for this card, and I really like how it turned out. So the first thing I'm going to show is the background. And I'm using the hardwood, and for this, I don't even have to put the hardwood on the block. I can just put it right on my paper. 
This is how I love using these, and I'm just going to put some color around it. This will be totally non-messy. I drop my card on it, and then I put my paper right over it like this. And if her husband is helping, this is where he comes in. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Julie says when she embosses on vellum, it comes off even after I've cooked it. Um, hmm. So are you saying the... We'll have to think about that, because... Um, are you saying the black part flakes off? I know the trick with vellum is you want to get too close because you don't want to burn, scorch the vellum. But I don't usually have that happen. I just keep going until it's all still bright and shiny and just keep it up. So how cool is that? So then I'm going to show you. This is when I started, and you're going to notice the difference here. On this one, I have these all these little white flecks. And I really didn't want that look. So if you want that look, do what I did. <laughs> if you don't, do it this way. So I discovered on this one, I did this first. And then I embossed the daisies. And you can see the embossing powder kind of got into some of the little places and were just were really noticeable. So on this one, I went ahead and embossed my daisies first. And then did this over it. And when you bleach, you know, so you would have seen the little wood through here. But once you bleach it, the bleach takes that out too, that color. So that's what I would do instead. <laughs> Patricia said, thanks, Tim. She doesn't pound hard enough. That's right. Carolyn says, what do you mean? Cook it on the... Yeah, they're asking questions. So we'll get more clarification from that. So now to do this, I have an old blender pen that I just leave. Usually it has a little... Um, so I have to do that. Uh, I think it fell off now. A little um, masking tape or a little uh, what do you, washi tape on it to mark which one it is because then I always use it. it was a dried up one perfect to do with one of your dried up ones instead of re-inking it because you know you can re-ink them too and then I put oh that one even disappeared I think this one's been re-inked a little that's okay we'll use the other side if you ever had one of those disappear you can take little tweezers and just pull it so it's fine and I put just a teeny tiny little bit of bleach in here and then I am going to just paint on the inside. Now for this technique, I do want it to be embossed because the embossing keeps the bleach from spreading out. If you do it without embossing, you get a different kind of look, which is also a cool look. So like I said, the name of the game is try anything. A lot of techniques, you know, are discovered by accident. And you know, it's just paper and inks and you know, bleach you don't want to get other places. I was saying back in April like too, that. I don't use bleach. I haven't used bleach in the house for years because we don't want toxins in the house. So what do I do for my crafting? I have to get the tiniest amount of bleach and I only use it for this technique. I don't use it for anything else. So, was the gallon, so what crafting was the makes me size. do it? So yeah, he bought No, we did not. <laughs> I said, I want to make sure you never run out. This will be your lifetime worth of stamping. But do you see how beautiful that turns out? And then as it dries, it turns into this color. Yeah, I love the blender pen. You know, you could use it with a paintbrush or two, but the blender pen with the tips really gives you a lot of nice control, you know. And I don't mind that it went out a few places because it kind of adds to the charm. But, you know, if I were being really fussy, I don't think on this one, I think on this one I was probably being more careful. But, you know, who knows? They're all one of a kind. It doesn't really matter. Cheryl says, could you add the bleach to the pen? You know, I uh, try it. I bet you could. Um, you know, anything's worth a try. If you... Try it and it works, let us know. Okay, and now we're on to Tim's time. And I want to mention a couple things about Tim first. <laughs> we started on our trip. And we started calling Tim the Wing It Man because we'd mentioned to somebody and the name caught on. And so, and I said, you know, it really, that came from you guys. And so I have this birthday card. If you remember this, this was from, this is Tim Titus, the Wing It Man from Pauline Turner. And I was trying to remember, and I tried going back, and I can't find through the comments, who actually came up with this idea. Because so I'm going to do a blog post tomorrow about Tim's journey with stamping. And it's going to be Tim the Winged Man, and we're going to start using that as his hashtag. <laughs> so he does come. And I would love to credit the original person. And it might have been two or three of you. I thought it was maybe on the Tool Time video, but I couldn't find it, and then I just kind of gave up. So if you know who did it, or if it's you... Would you please do that? Because I'd love to give you credit in the blog post. I am going to put this card in because Pauline turned it into a card. And it just it's really just stuck because I think we all know how much Tim wings it. So it's so, so everyone's in loving Thailand, that. Yes. In mm -hmm. Thailand, Shelly and Sterling are the, 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 the 
the grandparents of the company and their daughter Sarah runs the company now and Sarah's daughter Sydney is the one that got so excited about Tim the Winget Man that she said you need to start putting hashtag Tim the Winget Man every time you make And something. we wouldn't have thought of that because we haven't used so hashtag, hashtag so we'll credit her with that idea. Yes. That's awesome. Um, so anyway, so it's all great. And that probably means I should start using Instagram or something. Cause I don't know if you use hashtags on Facebook. You, you can, but it's not as popular as. Okay, Tim, Instagram. I am looking for the card that was the, the reason for what we're doing this. We have this gorgeous card. Okay. I'll find it when we get up. So Tim's job is Tim's to job. make <laughs> something kind of like this. Yes. So I first took the silver piece and put it through the brick wall so he has this to work with and then I think he knows what to do here I think I do I practiced and I practiced and practiced he, and yeah some practice and practice you know what what it is I showed him and this is how I showed him you take this you dab it on then you take this and you dab it on. So I didn't even do it. So so that's that's how this works. Before Tim comes on, that's as much instruction as he wants. And then he goes, okay, I'm ready to wing it. <laughs> so here he goes. Here I go. Okay. So the first one, this little brick brick uh, brick needs some black. And Karen said that it kind of highlights. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, smeared in everything. That's nice. And then I'm going to take this. And she said, if I remember her right, just kind of put it different places. What do you think? Is that enough, folks? I think it is. All right. We'll see this if this even works. Do I care what color? Karen, I'm talking to you. No, I don't care. Do you care? Okay, we're going to put some fine powder on here. And then we're going to shake it and bake it. Shake it. That is the silver foil paper. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And then we're going to and bake his, it. His assistant will clean this. Clean that. That's nice. Let's see where the handle, where the knob is. Oh, there it is. This is supposed to be copper. I have forgotten to order copper, so this is actually early espresso that we used to have, but I would suggest doing it with copper. How do you turn this? Oh, there, there. it is. <laughs> He's not Tim the Tool Man, okay? <laughs> so while Tim is intently doing that, Somebody asked about a bleach pen. I have tried a bleach pen because I'd rather have that in the house, but it is not as potent or as strong. I didn't get the same results. Am I supposed to stop at some point? When it turns shiny. Okay. You might want to hold it a little more at one place. For oh, my oh, okay. oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Now he knows. And this technique is called tarnish foil, and I did find the card that inspired us. I'll show oh, that afterwards. Oh, man. That is nice. Okay, now we take that white thing again, and we dab it some more in different spots. That's this is kind of like a memory test for Tim. He's doing well. That is not going to ruin it, is it? Even if it does, it'll be okay. Right, that's the philosophy. He's going to do a different dabbing technique this time, see? Mm -hmm. And no two are supposed to turn out the same. And that is the truth. Okay, now we are going to use another color. I assume this is a different one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See that she hasn't even taken the whole thing off. <laughs> and again, being a perfectionist, you gotta you gotta consider those kinds of things. Okay. <gasps> oh, I'm starting to like this.
So first I'm just, oh my goodness, look at that. This is fun. Maybe look I'll have that. Jim do all the embossing. Uh, you look know, at that. <laughs> that is gorgeous. A couple of you have said, oh, I wish my husband would stamp with me. I, I just have to tell everyone, you know, Really, Tim doesn't stamp with me. He only stamps when the camera's on. So I want you to know no. that this is not something we do together. <laughs> He's just a willing partner here. <laughs> Look at that. That is beautiful. The that gold. is. The gold is really nice. I like that. Very nice. Isn't that nice? Okay, now, I think I'm supposed to do something with this. Just make your card. Make <laughs> <laughs> A completed okay. project, please. <laughs> okay, where's my bone folder? This isn't quite... Oh, it's right down there is your bone folder because it's just not perfect. Who else absolutely needs a bone folder? I do. I know some people come to class and they have to remember to bring your own. I have a bunch. Some of us can't find them. <laughs> Tim would be able to. Okay. Now I think we're going to do this. Snail. What's going on? You gave me a, a blank. No, I did not. Gave me a snail that was empty. Oh no, there's a smudge on here, but you know what? It'll have to do. Just now, part this, of the road. This, oh. is the, this is the hard part, you know, for me. Because this is like, Karen can do this in her sleep. And this morning she was doing that for about three, <laughs> three and a half hours. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. See, that's not perfect, but it's going to have to do. It's actually dirt on the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's little powdery stuff all over. Is this how I do this one? Mm -hmm. Snail is a man's best friend. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, that turned out great. It did. Now, let's see. I'm going to have the motorcycle coming out. I think I'm going to do it this way. Because there is a right way, you know. Yeah, Anita says that. Magic of embossing never stops amazing me. Oh, I know. It's just so, so fun. <laughs> Sandy says OCD. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> oh, not a chance. Not a chance. Okay, now, <laughs> this is starting to turn out to be a nice card. Now, how do I pound on it? The most <laughs> Whoa, okay. The motorcycle comes from the One Wild Ride. That is nice. And Tim, have you ever had a motorcycle? Yes, I did. Is there a reason for this gold wing? Yes, there is. I had a Honda Gold Star, Gold Wing. No, I had a little one. I don't remember what it was called, but Karen made me get rid of it when we had children. <laughs> she says, I don't want you endangering your life when we have children, so get rid of it. So we actually sold it to our neighbor who... We traded it. We traded it for labor. He built our deck for us in the back of our house, and I gave him my motorcycle in lieu of pay. And he's never let me forget it. But that deck was nice, you know, because it had room for my hammocks. So. <laughs> Why is this upside down? Do I hold it like this? No. You're... Oh, oh, no, you, it is right. You're good. You're it good. is right. You're it good. is right. Okay. But wouldn't you think, uh, come on, give me some way to go, Tim. Nice car. Oh, okay, Lee. that's what he wants. Lee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you. Mary, thank you. <laughs> Kathy, thank you. Okay. Catherine. <laughs> stay here and just keep reading Oh my goodness, reading this is really these, nice. so. <laughs> That's what Tim loves. Yes, do I people do. like my card? Did I get any hearts or thanks? Awesome <laughs> job, Tim. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, Tim. And born, would you like, this is the card that inspired it. Born to be a wild crafter. But see, now here is the same technique on the back. And this was one of my Tylen swaps that I shared on the video. And I know everyone loved it. And that was by Yvonne Pri from Australia. But, and, she, and this is done on the copper. And you can see she used more black, and then she's got gold and silver. So what you can do with this, there's just no end, so it's a fun look. Really? Really? Now, if Tim is ready to move away from reading comments, I have one more to show, and this is one of my favorites, too. I absolutely love this last one, too, and I love this. Don't this is lose just that. really. <laughs> That's my card. I won't, Tim. It'll go on the blog tomorrow when oh, I'm talking about Tim's. Tim's things. So, Karen Dixon says, Tim, you get better every time. So I said, Thank well, I asked you. him, are you ready to tackle a real technique? Because that's kind of what I planned for this. Um, Thank you, Karen. Now, the last one, I have to figure out where... Oh, Tim put his things on it, of course. I can't find it. But here it is. 
Okay, for this... You want me to get rid of this and put it over? Uh, no. Oh, actually, you can get rid of these things because I, I need this. Okay. Okay. So this is the the Garden Petal, I believe it is, paper stack. Beautiful, beautiful papers. And um, I have a great project coming up that we're going to be doing with that later. I said I have more ideas than, than we have shows, so it's interesting. But don't these make just gorgeous cards? Just this paper pack alone, it's a $10 paper pack. And just, you know, you could add some words on something and you just have it striking. What we're adding today is this gorgeous butterfly. Do you see how shiny that is? And it's going to work on either one of these. And this is what it looks like to start with because it's the same paper. It's the sweet sugar plum, which is one of the colors in this paper. So I just picked two that would go with it. But we're going to make it really shiny and glossy like that. So how cool is that? Oh, Paula's husband sold her so they could get a new kitchen floor. Oh, Tim, not yeah. the only one. <laughs> That's good. Anita says, Tim, have you considered selling your cards? You know what? This is a true story. Tim said, Karen, do I have to keep giving my cards away? Because then I don't have them. <laughs> so he's getting, seriously, he's getting really attached to his cards. And he won't make more than one. So therefore, he really can't sell them. <laughs> yeah, Tim is born to be wild. <laughs> okay, wearing his tie-dye shirts and crafting. Love that comment, Cindy Dupree. And, and she's... She's commenting, Sharon, so Sharon must have said that too. Sharon says, sorry, but that's a dragonfly. Why did I call it a butterfly? <laughs> well, I was debating between the butterfly and the dragonfly, and I said, oh, let's do the dragonfly. I love these thinlets. Now, if you're watching these things and you don't have a big shot and you have been thinking, oh, I really would like to get that, but it's a big ticket item, it is a perfect time to buy the starter kit. I just want to um, quickly mention that because you get all these free things with it this month. We have a QA and a video if you just go back to our page, Stamping on the Back Porch on Facebook, uh, you'll see a QA and a video real soon after this where we did the other day that where we were talking about, you know, why you might want to buy the card. So I'm not going to go into that here, but it is an amazing deal for this month. And it's perfect if you have some big ticket items you'd like, like the big shot and a bunch of things to go with it. So just a thing. Or all the embossing stuff if you have an emboss. So so <laughs> Pauline Turner says, Tim is like my husband, does one little thing and he wants to be praised all day long. But we love him. Tim, is that right? Oh, you got Tim no, nail just, on the head. It's till three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Anita says she couldn't make two cards alike anyway. If she tried, oh yeah, that might be different. Okay, so to turn this into this, I'm hoping that shows. I'm going to oh Tim, I need the Versamark pad. Oh no, it's here. I don't need it. I don't I, need you. I it's here. It. You didn't take it. So for this, um, I should have a little tweezers or one of those little poker things for the piecing. Do we have anything like that out here? Otherwise, I'll just make do. I'll see what Tim can find because I'm not sure if he knows what I'm looking for. I'm just going to put this in the Versamark, get it inked up. I'm just going to need that once, and then I'm going to put work? my clear... Well, this is what he brought me, and yes, that works. So he knows the kitchen <laughs> better than the craft room, I guess. That's the reality, because I just don't want to, you know, have to touch all this and, and get it. Okay, so let's see if I've got that good. Okay, and, then you and your, now your I'm going to stuff. heat it. Let's see how quickly this goes. And so if you're watching now, Vanessa, this is how you heat emboss. You just put whatever ink you're doing. I could have used um, any of our inks actually work if you if you just work fast and make sure it's well inked. Except for the stays on. But you know, for here, if you want it to be the color of the paper or it'll be the color of the powder. And since I'm doing clear, it's still the color of the powder. So then I'm just going to, while it's still warm, I'm going to dump more on. Oh, good, Tim. You can keep doing that. That's perfect. <laughs> And I'm going to scoop it up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a knife works, you know, quite well. Okay. So. <laughs> Could have gotten a spoon. Well, you know, it all works. And then I'm. this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep layering it. I'll do one more layer. But you can see how that's really coming to life with the shine. And it's because it's still warm. 
that I don't need to add any more Versamark. If this cooled off, and I want, like if I wanted to add more to this one, I'd just start over again with the Versamark. But this is still hot enough that it'll just keep, that'll just keep adding. Okay, so this will be the last one. And again, if I were making cards like this, you know, you can do a bunch of these at one time and then you have them to, to work on cards. But now how pretty is that? Okay, I'm going to use the one that's already cooled off. So I'm going to just bend the wings a little and I'll put it, I'm going to attach it with a couple of glue dots. And I'm going to let the rest be free. I just put one under the head and one under the body. And then I'm just going to put it on the card like that. Now, how fun is that? I'm glad people are liking that. And then I'll have one on this card. So, um, Twice Baked Dragonflies. Good name. Love that. So, I, yeah, I think these turned out well. I will send one of these to somebody today. So, I, I, I will send some of my cards out. <laughs> and we won't make Tim. So, how fun is that? <laughs> So I, th I think that's it. I'm glad that you enjoy that. So this, oh, next week we are going to be doing things with a little wild, the cute little animal set that goes on both sides. So be, and we'll have some fun things to show with that. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you need the catalog, let me know. Uh, if you want to place an order, remember the extra goodies that you get. And uh, if you want to watch the Q and A video, it's just an awesome time to, to join Stampin' Up and you can just buy for yourself. You don't need, you, 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 there's no obligation. So it's whatever you want. But do we have the a fun new, group. There's a question, what do the new mini? Do the new mini thick things, the new mini dimensionals? I bet they do. <laughs> I haven't tried them. I have them in the other room, but I haven't tried them. So I haven't used the dra dragonfly since then. But the dragonfly is such an awesome set. But I bet they do. And it is fun to have the little size and not to be cutting apart the other. <laughs> Tamika. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I think that's it for today. We will see you next week yes. at one o'clock again. And thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.